criticism of the New Deal. Before I go into the criticism, I did want to point out like one way that all of you may be affected actually by the New Deal. Um, if you've ever been to the Fort Worth Botanic Gardens, the Rose Garden actually was made by um, the CWA during the New Deal. So there you go. The New Deal is not going to end the Great Depression. It is going to help in the recovery, but this recovery is uneven and a lot of people are gonna remain unemployed. Really where we see the New Deal being the most successful is it's just reducing suffering and reducing fear more than anything else. And this actually is what carries the Democratic Party into victory during the 1934 elections, which is a midterm election year, so it's not a presidential election. Keep in mind, FDR was elected in 1932. Still though, even with it reducing suffering and fear, there is going to be criticism against the New Deal. And this criticism is going to come from two different sides, the far right and the far left, or really just say the right and the left. So when we're looking at the right's criticism, this is going to be people who are more conservative. They are going to complain about things like excessive government spending. Um, they feel like the expansion of the government weakens the autonomy of American businesses. Basically, they see any kind of effort to aid non-businesses as like socialistic and, like I said, excessive spending. This is going to be a lot of like industrialists and bankers during this time period. But really, these critics actually attracted very little popular support. And more than anything else, they just antagonized FDR. Most of the realistic criticism of this time period came from the left. Now, when you're looking to the far left, you're going to see different groups of like communists and socialists who basically wanted to focus the public attention on the poor, especially in areas like the countryside. We're also seeing unions trying to form and trying to strike to get certain rights during this time period. And a lot of times these unions are going to be made up of minorities and they're going to be met with violent reprisals. I mean, we see things like three picketers are killed in California. Um, a landlord shoots union organizers in Arkansas. And a lot of these are in rural areas as well and really would lead to a lot of sympathy for farm workers. And so it's bringing up the issue that we shouldn't be having these kinds of this kind of violence if the New Deal was really taking care of everyone. And so we're seeing all of this labor militancy basically during this time period and really more striking than before because workers are demanding their rights. The thing is, FDR is going to plea with different businesses to um, basically treat their employees fairly, but employers more often than not are just going to move to crush the strikes and you'd, they'd use like complacent police and private strike breakers as well. And so we see a lot of violence really aimed at the strikers. Now, that being said, a lot of times workers would hold their ground and oftentimes would attract popular support, but it's very clear these workers needed more help and they needed help from the government if they really wanted to achieve their rights. And so this is like some of that left criticism of the New Deal that we shouldn't be having this violence if the New Deal was truly taking care of all these people. And a lot of New Dealers, such as like Harry Hopkins, are gonna realize that labor's demands just can't be ignored. So this is one criticism just looking at society. We also have four different prominent individuals who are gonna mobilize a lot of the popular discontent and basically demand more government action to assist like groups that they feel like are being neglected by the New Deal. So the first on this list is William Lemieux. He was a representative from North Dakota. He's basically gonna call attention to the rural distress. Um, he's going to call attention to the limited response to help farmers and point out issues with like the AAA. Remember, that was what was helping farmers at this time with the New Deal. And their strategy of basically simply restricting production just wasn't enough and in many ways was pretty much insane with, you know, keep in mind people are starving to death and yet they're limiting the amount of food going to the market. 
Uh, the second individual is going to be Francis Townsend. He was a California physician, and he is going to try to bring America's attention on the nation's elderly who oftentimes were destitute during this time. He actually made a plan known as the Townsend Plan that um, would call for a government pension for every American over 60 as long as this re recipient retired from work and spent the entire pension. Now, the idea of this is, first of all, extending relief to the elderly so that they can retire. Um, and then on top of that, it's going to give a lot of jobs for unemployed because if the elderly are retiring that opens up jobs for other people to take and it would stimulate economic recovery because they'd have to spend all of their pension. Uh, the third is actually pictured here Father Charles Coughlin. He was a Catholic priest in Detroit and really he actually did threaten to mobilize a really large constituency against the limitations of the early New Deal. He had actually originally um, supported the New Deal but he's going to conclude that FDR's policies favored businesses and finance more so. And so he's going to organize like lobbyists to reach further. Um, he was a real challenge to FDR's Democratic Party because a lot of people listened to his radio broadcasts. And these radio broadcasts would mitch religion and anti-Semitism and demand like social justice as well as financial reform. The last on this list also was a real threat to um, FDR, so to speak, and that was Senator Huey P. Long of Louisiana. First of all, he was just very charming, so that's one thing. But he wanted to establish a more autocratic, modernized state with, you know, like taxation and educational reforms, as well as an extensive public works program. Um, he basically wanted things like a more comprehensive social welfare policy that the New Deal had not necessarily put forward. Uh, he wanted things like confiscatory taxes on the rich so that they could provide every family with a decent income. There's a lot of debate about confiscatory taxes. I would recommend you going looking up. He wanted more things like health coverage. Um, he wanted more education reform and age old pensions. And the appeal behind these ideas was really enormous. But the thing is, when you look at all of these individuals together, what you're really seeing is complex issues, but simple fears from the American people. That people are concerned that the New Deal isn't doing enough. But how to fix that and where to fix it, that's where it gets complicated. Now, some of these plans were way too expensive, such as like the Townsend plan. There was no way we could have afforded it at that point in time. And some of them approached demagoguery, you know, like Father Charles Coughlin and Huey P. Long to a certain extent. Um, but the fact that they're so popular basically warns FDR that more government action is needed. So I ask you this, do you think the critics of the New Deal were justified? Why or why not?